So this is how the workbench of ANSYS Fluent 2019 looks like. As you can see here on the left toolbar, we have the different type of analysis systems. We've got Fluid Flow and CFX and Fluid Flow and Fluent, which are the two main components of ANSYS um, CFD. And then you have different component systems, uh, again, which we have CFX and Fluent, which you can use directly. Um, you've got geometry to create your own geometry. You've got mesh um, that meshes the geometry and then you've got results. So you've got individual components here. You've got the full built-in systems on the top. And as we go down, we can see some other parameters as well. So as you know, CFD is quite an advanced um, tool. So in this lecture today, we would just be concentrating on the very basics of how to create a geometry, how to mesh it, how to run it, and how to visualize results. Standard controls on the top, you've got file menu, you've got your um, view toolbar where you can refresh and create um, other toolboxes. You've got tools, units, important SI or metric system. Again, you've got the US system also. So depending on whichever units you are more comfortable with, you can use the type of units. You've got extensions and then jobs and then help. So to create a very simple project in Fluent, we will start with the Fluent Fluid Flow tab. All you need to do is just drag and drop to the main toolbar and then this gets dropped on. Some of the com components that you can see here are, se are line-wise sequential. So you start with geometry, then you mesh it, then we set it up, uh, we run it, iterate, and then we can see the results. So let's start with the first lecture on how to create a geometry. If you right click on geometry, we can see that there are two main design modelers that ANSYS Fluent uses. The new one is called Space Claim Geometry, and then there is a design modeler as well. So these are the two built in features into the ANSYS um, Fluent Geometry tab. You can also import geometry. So if you were using a CAD software like SolidWorks or Solid Edge or AutoCAD, anything that has a file that can be imported, um, you can import as well. And it accepts all common file formats like .igs, .stl, um, and .revit as well. So uh, what I'm going to do here today is to use the design modeler geometry, which is the more simpler of the two. So let's get started with this. And now this opens the design modeler toolbar. It would take some time to load. Um, ANSYS Fluent can be a heavy software, not recommended for laptops that have a low RAM. Uh, much better if you have a desktop or a laptop that has a very high performance RAM. So this is the geometry toolbar. Lots of options. Uh, again, so just to keep it very simple, let's look at some of the basic options. So here you've got your planes, three planes, X, Y, X, Z, and Y, Z. So this is the Z plane in 2D, the X plane and the Y plane, and this is in 3D. On the other side, you've got sketching. This is where we would create the drawings, which I will show you in a moment. Um, let me go back to modeling now, and let's go through the top. You've got the file option, where you would can import your file or create your own file creating basic shapes, extruding, revolving, sweeping, etc. Different concepts. You can create points and create lines from it. You can create a sketch and create a line from it. Or you can create a sketch and create a surface from it. Difference between a surface and a line. A line is an interconnecting part between two points. A surface is an interconnecting part between multiple lines. Toolbar don't need this at the moment so this is all hidden this usually comes up after you have extruded your first shape and then you can do all sorts of different things with it um, units again important I usually use the meter but if you are comfortable with other units you can use other units as well 
keep in mind that units are absolutely essential because the Fluent software is not bound by the geometry size. So you can create a geometry that can be as big as multiple kilometers to as small as micrometers. So you have to be very careful about what are the units you are wanting to use depending on if you want to use a real life case or you want to do a prototype level. In the view you, you can see different views again once we create the geometry I will be able to show you what these different views mean wireframe means you can see through it shaded exterior means that you cannot see through it and then we have the help so since we are l looking at a basic model of how to show airflow around a circle to see how air movement happens as it passes through a circle let's start by drawing a simple circle so I'll go to sketch and I will choose my plane at which I want to create my circle so if I want it to be facing me I go to the Z plane now it brings me to a 2D model and I go around clicking a circle now the first point that I click would be the center point of the circle click there and then I can select the size of the cir circle as you can see on the bottom right it shows you the coordinates as, as well in the Y and X direction um, so that's the coordinates again very um, easy to create so if I just go with the normal size which is approximately 10 by 10 or 9 by 11 in this case I can click again and now it creates me a circle dimensions can be modified if you pull this tab to the top you, you can see that in your circle you can create a sketch you can modify its dimensions you can uh, if you don't have a circle, if you have a square, you can use the fillet, chamfer, trim, toolbar, something that's very standard on most CAD platforms. So even if you are not very comfortable on drawing a geometry in ANSYS, you can draw your geometry in a CAD software that you are comfortable with and then just import your geometry into ANSYS. Both ways are fine. Coming back to our geometry now, so if I click on the ball here it takes me to a 3d view right so I want to now create an extrusion because I want to have a solid surface a solid volume through which air can pass or through which air can go around it so I will go back to my modeling tab and I will go to my create option and I will click extrude so this brings me to the extrude tab which is here extrude one it asks me in the geometry to select the geometry so I'll go to my circle and I will click and then I will click apply so now it has selected the geometry that I want to extrude and now I will give it a depth of the extrusion so since my circle was roughly 10 by 10 meter I would want to create an extrusion that's also relatively 10 um, or close to 10 meters so I would create a depth of 10 and I will press enter notice that I pressed enter it sh shows me how much the extrusion will be but it has not extruded it yet and that can be noticed by uh, the lightning sign over here so usually with ANSYS Fluent you would want to have a green tick against each and every component components that don't have a green tick are the ones uh, which need your attention so in this case the extrude does not have a green tick next to it which means I can re I can right click and I can see what the problem is with this so in this case it says that it needs to be generated before it can be successfully extruded so I will click generate and now it generates a extruded body for me now I have managed to create a circle now we need to run air around it we need to find out how the airflow will be when it comes in contact with the circle what happens to airflow at the front what happens to airflow at the back um, how do the vortices um, um, play a role so naturally now I need to create an environment around the circle which will act as my wind tunnel or which will act as my airflow um, and therefore I need to create that microclimate and that is what we call in ANSYS to be an enclosure 